Welcome back to the channel. My name is Abel and we are back with Football Manager 2021 and Hammer Time with West Ham United. And today we play our very first Premier League game of the season. In fact, with the very first match to take place. We're against Man City. It's a difficult start. We're at home and hopefully we can get something from this. We don't know what City are like. We don't know what business they've been doing in the window, if any. But yeah, it's a tough start to our season. But, you know, we're going to have to face City at some point. Let's get it out of the way first. We're also going to run through a couple of transfers I've made. Uh, there's been a few movements um, in and out. Uh, we'll have a quick look at how pre-season went. So pre-season was pretty much perfect. We won every single game apart from that intra squad friendly which we played last episode. But we won them all. Um, we did play a lot of our senior players for most of them. We gave a few spots to some youngsters here and there like Nathan Trott, the goalkeeper. Ben Johnson, our 20-year-old right back. Uh, Misaki Ju is a young uh, winger so you know we did give these people matches here and there and starts and appearances from the bench but yeah we won all of our games and we also won a little friendly cup in there as well we beat Lugano and we beat uh, Istanbul Basak Shahir which I can never say correctly no matter how many times I try so yeah that's pretty good going Robert Snodgrass has left the club. But he's gone to Russia, which is not where I was expecting him to go. I was, I was going to say he, he'd be a good championship sort of wide player. He's not long term 33. Uh, we get £2.7 million up front and there is a little bit of um, add-ons here and there as well. So I think it could rise to about four, four and a bit. But yeah, I felt like his time was sort of up at West Ham. He wasn't really going to get too much game time this season. Pre-season, pre he got a few um, goals in the friendlies so you know he did pretty well there but um yeah i just felt you know for the right hand side we've got antonio well we still have antonio we're still undecided whether or not we sell or keep him and then we've also got like sort of players for that side like bowen can play there uh we've signed a new right winger as well so uh yeah i don't think we really needed snodgrass and at 33 it made sense to give the chances to younger players that's more or less it we've sold a youngster to norwich he was only 17 that was about two hundred thousand. And Connor Coventry's gone on loan to Salford and Ashby's gone on loan to Morton. That's it in terms of sales so far. And of course, they made some sales in the window anyway, which, um, you know, some of them, okay, they made sense, but some of them just didn't. Like Roberto going, yeah, he was an awful goalkeeper. But selling Grady Diangana, a 22-year-old winger who's pretty good, to a newly promoted West Brom, who's going to be you know, a rival for West Ham in terms of trying to stay up. Did not make sense at all. The fans weren't happy about it, and rightfully so. I think it was a it was a strange decision by the board to let Dion Garner go and to allow him, allow him to be sold. It didn't really make sense to me. Sebastian Allaire uh, has a groin injury, going to be out for another uh, week or two. So he's going to miss the first sort of couple of matches of the season. Meant that we didn't have a natural striker at the club, not in the first team anyway. But now we do. We've got a striker. But first of all, I'll show you our new right winger who we've... Who we're paying 30 million for him. It might be a bit much, but we're paying 30 million for this guy. And that is Emiliano Buendia. A player that I've actually been thinking about signing long before this game has come out. It's a player that, you know, I'm, I'm amazed hasn't been picked up from Norwich in real life. 23 years old, from Argentina. Got relegated last season, of course, with Norwich, but was... What was their best player last season? Temu Puki got goals, of course, but Brendia was easily Norwich's best and most threatening player uh, last season for them in the Premier League. We've signed him for West Ham. Overall, with add-ons, it is £30.5 million. We are paying, I think it's £12 million up front. It might be a little bit more than that, but I think it's about £12-13 million, And then we're paying the rest over the next two years in uh, monthly instalments. So he will essentially replace Robert Snodgrass on that right-hand side. Very good dribble at the ball and good crossing as well. So going to play as a winger on that right-hand side. He is right-footed, so it doesn't really work as the sort of inside forwards and inverted wingers we've been using. So he's going to be a winger out on the right-hand side. Very good flair as well. And physically, he's pretty quick. He's determined. He's unpredictable as well. Very composed. I think this could be a really good signing. It's a lot of money for a player that was relegated last season. But like I said, I think he was Norwich's best player. Now onto the striker. Now, I did say that West Ham need a 20 goal a season striker. That's not who we've bought. 
because Brendia took up most of our transfer budget. We started this with just £10 million in the transfer budget and the board won't give us any more. And most of that was taken up by Brindia. And with the sale of Snodgrass, we had about two million left and a bit of wage budget. So we had to go into the free agents. Now, you know, there's a lot of free agents this season. Players that have left after their contracts and are no longer attached to a club. Mandzukic, I looked at, but he got picked up by Wolverhampton. Now, <laughs> before you start chasing me with your pitchforks. Yes, I have signed Mario Balotelli at 30 years old for West Ham. He's back in the Premier League. Um, honestly, I didn't mean to sign him on a three-year contract. <laughs> he's here for three years, Jesus Christ. But, okay, he's not exactly the hardest working striker in the world, is he? He he tends to get a little bit, like, selfish, and he's always in the headlines for the wrong reasons. But, you know what, technically, he's still pretty good. 16 technique, his long shots are good, he can be on penalties for us, his first touch is good, his free kicks are good, he's decent in the air. And mentally, like, he's got the skill, he's got the talent, it's just the, has he got the will, is the question. He's got the skill. Has he got the will? £13,000 a week isn't that much. It's, it's it's a very generous wage. So that's got that going for him. He's a free agent as well. So it hasn't cost us anything transfer wise. And for a three year contract, okay, thirteen grand is not that much. So if it turns out horribly, we can try and sell him. I don't know who'd pick him up. But um, yeah, Balotelli's here. And is he going to be here for the whole thing? I've got no idea, but it's a three-year deal. That maybe wasn't a good idea, but hopefully it works out. Uh, and we are still maybe looking to get rid of some players. Lanzini's still on the transfer list, so he might go. Um, we had a couple of bids in for him, but they weren't quite what we wanted. West, Ham, West Brom are still interested in a deal. We were looking at maybe moving on Ryan Fredericks, but he's actually been pretty good pre-season. And... You know what? The ability doesn't look that good. His star rating doesn't look great. But the actual stats, like physically, he's fantastic. He's rapid. And again, technically, like, his, tr his crossing's good. And as a wing back, which we are going to be using in this system, he's been really good pre-season. He got an assist. Average rating 7.16 over six appearances in total. He's been very solid pre-season. So we are going to keep him for now. And then maybe assess things in January. So I think that might be it for our transfers so far. Because if we're keeping Fredericks from now, we don't need a right back. We did look at the guy from Lazio, but um, he was all right, but wouldn't really have improved us. So this is the system that we're currently using. Um, for the first time uh, since they introduced them, I've gone away from using the preset tactics. You know, your gay compressors or your tiki tackers. I've instead um, built up my own tactic from the ground up. I wanted to give it a go. In pre-season, this has been great. As you saw, we want every match in our friendlies. Come Man City, though, it might be a different story. So this is a three-at-the-back formation, essentially a 3-4-3. Three, three. So Lucas Fabianski, this is the team that's going to play against Man City, by the way. Lucas Fabianski will play in goal. And we have a back three of Issa Diop, uh, Declan Rice, and Fabian Balbuena. Now, Rice is going to be at centre-back today, just because Noble's the captain. I think he has to play. And Pablo Fornells is one of our better players in midfield and a player that I think we need to build this midfield around. So I don't really feel like I can drop Fornells and Noble unless they dip in form. So Rice is in at centre-back for now. And we do also have Ogbonna on the bench so we can bring him in. Maybe move Rice a bit further up. But yeah, that's what we're looking at there. Uh, we've got Cresswell and Kufal as wing-backs at the moment. Cresswell as complete wing-back. And we have Masuaka on the left. We have Fredericks on the right. And we also have the 20-year-old Ben Johnson as well. So I think four-back, wing-back, we're really, really good. And then the front three today, Jared Bowen on the left. Uh, Buendia is going to make his competitive debut on the right. He did play uh, half a match pre-season and started one in those friendly cups. Antonio is going to start up front today with Halle injured. So Antonio is going to be the striker for now. And then on the bench, no goalkeepers on the bench. Um, hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt me, but I don't think it's happened yet. Uh, so the bench is Masawaku, Ogbonna, Fredericks, Lanzini, Socek, Benrama, and Yarmolenko. So Balotelli not going to feature today. We're going to try and get him some fitness in the reserves before we bring him in. So Antonio is going to start today. And then Yarmolenko can kind of play as a striker. So can Bowen. So it's not the end of the world that we're missing Halle. It would just be nice to have a natural out-and-out -out striker up there. 
So that's what we're looking at. Uh, we do have a couple of variants, so we can move to a four at the back if we want to bring Cresswell and Kufal back and move Rice up into midfield. And we could even go for just a back two, which would be... It would be a ballsy move, but would be, you know, really good if we're looking for a goal. Just, you know, push Cresswell and Kufal up the pitch and keep D Diop and Balbrenner as essentially just a two at the back. So it would be like a 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three formation, which would be... I don't know. I I haven't really tested it too much. We had it a little bit pre-season for one or two matches, but I tended to give up quite early for a while and bring the wing backs backwards a bit. But for today, we're going to go with this three at the back with Diop, Rice, and Balbuena. How pleased are you that Mark Noble signed a new contract? Very pleased. Um, I didn't mention that, but yeah, Mark Noble has uh, extended his contract by a year. And there is an option to extend it for another year as well. Yeah, Mark Noble signed a new deal, as has Lucas Fabianski. He signed a three-year contract as well. But Antonio, we're waiting on. Of course, that's up to you. Um, there is a tweet in the description with a poll. And you can decide whether we keep or sell Mikhail Antonio. At the moment, I think sell is winning. Uh, but I can't remember how much buy. I think it's about 60 to 40 sell. So uh, we'll wait and see how that goes. Okay, we've got a tactical meeting now. So we can see uh, how Man City are expected to start. No Aguero, no Sterling. Interesting team selection. Maybe they've got some injury problems. Okay, into the team selection. Now, the reason I showed you the squad on the previous screen is because this is much smaller. Now, I like the backgrounds during press conferences and team meetings. But during this, like, what's this? What's that bringing? You can't... You, you, there's not enough space on the screen for all the information you need. So... I don't like this screen. I don't know about anyone else, but I don't like this screen because having the stuff in the background just doesn't add anything. And it's it's giving you less space for the information that you need for your team selection. So hopefully this is something that they may might look at. I don't know what other people think about this, but I'm not a fan. Okay, so we have the team sheets here. Now, unfortunately, we can't click on the Man City players here. You could on the previous screen with a predicted 11, but so that's not their predicted starting 11. I think that had Zinchenko starting. But it's Edison, Walker, Diaz, Laporte, Mendy, Fernandinho, Gundahan, Rodri, Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, and Gabriel Jesus. Okay, we have our pre-match team talk. Now, I'm going to point the finger and say, good luck, lads. Go out there and pull off an upset. So we are underdogs for this one. Uh, we can still talk to individuals. Again, we'll pump fists and say, show me what you got today. That's a good team talk. We've got some motivated players out there into the tunnel. Uh, we're about to make our managerial debut. I can't wait to get started. Hale misses out. It's not ideal. And our 100th league appearance for the club already for Declan Rice. That's a great uh, thing for him. And Buendia on his debut as well. Okay, the match is underway. Let's see how things go. Now, this is something that I don't like is that my camera height is always reset at the start of every game once I start another game I don't know why it doesn't keep it from the previous match that's a bit of a shame but we've got a throw in here in a good position but uh, Noble's lost out to Mendy here's Gabriel Jesus who's a bit deep but gives it to De Bruyne and De Bruyne now down the left finds Rodrigo Rodrigo Mendy gets it back and cross in there it's a deep cross Fernandinho Gundahan. Out wide, Carl Walker's got lots of space. With, I, I, I say we're forcing him out wide, but they seem to like that. So we should maybe turn that off. Here's Gundahan, and it's taken a deflection. It's cleared, but City coming forward again here. Good spell of possession here for City. Mendy and Buendia looking to take it off of uh, Benjamin Mendy, who's got it back again. Here's De Bruyne. I mean, they, they don't really like having a shot, do they? Ferdinand has a shot eventually, but it's wide from range. 27 minutes gone. Walker with a throw. He's got it back. And he goes for a cross, and it's uh, saved by Fabianski, but uh, can't keep it out. It's a corner. And City, with a spell of dominance here, is a uh, Gundahan has a header over. Not been a fantastic match so far. No big chances for either team. Another set piece here for City. And it's Laporte, and it's off the post, and it's cleared by Buendia. And it's the last highlight of the first half, half time. Uh, we didn't really do much ourselves. We barely created a thing there, but City, lots of um, lots of the ball, but I don't think they created anything massive. XG is just below one for them. No big chances in that first half, but we did see a lot of Man City there. I think they were on top, but I think so far goalless isn't too bad. If we can hold them to a draw, that's not too bad. City are very, very good. 
Okay, we're going to go, I think, hands together. It's a bit cautious, but hands together. I'm pleased with how things are going. You know, we haven't conceded. We haven't created much going forward. But hopefully we can do that in the second half. Let's see if we can snatch a goal. Gabriel Jesus and Rodrigo Gundahan. Jesus can go for goal here. Good save by Fabianski. Issa Diop clears. his Bowen. We can't really get rid of it. You know what? We're going to go to cautious. We're going to try and counter-attack. Chris Ball making the run forward. He has got Bowen up ahead of him. Finds Jared Bowen. Can he put something into the box for Antonio? Or is he going to go himself? He's going to go himself. You know, he could have easily squared it for someone. And he's gone for goal from a tight angle, which I thought was fixed from FM20. But turns out it's not. 68 minutes on the clock. It's a corner for Man City. And it's headed away by Balbuena. Here's Bernardo Silva. Could look at making a change in a second. Fernandinho to Bernardo Silva. Rodri. City haven't scored yet, but they've still got time. About 20, 25 minutes or so. Mendy with the ball in there, and it's a header by Jesus. So that's off. Man City have bought on Christopher Azure and uh, Felan Torres. I think we are going to make uh, a substitution. Daryl Bowen's not had the greatest of matches. We are going to bring on Saeed Benarama on the left-hand side. And we are also going to bring it back to uh, our back four formation and put Rice up between Fornals and Noble. So we are going to change things up slightly. We've done well to keep City out. They probably should be winning this game. We haven't really created anything ourselves. Here's Easy Diop. We're on 79 minutes. Here's Balbuena. To Cresswell. We've had very few shots in this game. But here's Ben Rama. This could be a good chance here. What on earth was that? <laughs> that was a terrible effort. Is he is he right footed? He's right footed, and that was awful. That was well off target. Alright, we are going to take off Mark Noble. We're going to bring on Thomas Socek. And our last change is we're going to bring off Brendia. He's had a alright game. He hasn't done too much wrong. We're going to put Yarmolenko on on the right hand side, inside forward on attack. Can we get something late on here? A real smash and grab win here against City. That would be amazing. Here's Kufal to Socek, the substitute. Kufal's got it back. This is a promising run. And then he gives it away to Azure. Okay, it was going so well. Here's Ferran Torres. Still running down that left-hand side. Someone needs to tackle him. And that's poor. And Silva has put it in. 86 minutes coming up. And City get a late goal. That's very disappointing. Giving it away. And then... Torres, that was just too easy for him. Like No one went to tackle him. And then we missed this as well. I don't know what Cresswell was doing there, but he could have cleared that, surely. That's disappointing to concede that late on. We haven't really deserved anything from this, but I don't know. That was a bad goal to concede. And that's full time. It's a 1-0 loss to start the season. Uh, we didn't create anything in that game, so that's a bit of a concern. Pre-season has been going so well. But then our XG there was 0 0.4. Just two shots on target. That's not really good enough. I think City deserved the win. But, you know, we kept them out for so long. And then to concede late on to a goal like that as well. is a bit disappointing. Okay, we are going to uh, go outstretched arms. And I can say I can't fault you for effort. They're motivated. That's all right. Man City are a good team. They should have won that. But the goal we conceded wasn't a great one. So it wasn't really the start we wanted. You know, we kept him quiet for a long time there and eventually conceded late on to um, to Bernardo Silva. Four hours was our best player on the day. Uh, he had a key pass. Six interceptions, not too bad. Um, so we did well there. Kufat was pretty good. Uh, Cresswell with some good, good balls, good passing. Diop winning some key headers as well. So some good aerial battles there for him. But just didn't create anything going forward. Okay, so let's see what we have coming up then. Uh, so our next match is Southampton in the Carabao Cup second round. I would have liked a bit of a better draw for that than another Premier League team. But hey-ho. Uh, so where do we go next? Um, I usually do five matches off camera, which means the next time I'll have Man United at home. We just have Man City next time. Could be Man United. So we will do Man United next time, but down the line, I think we're going to try and get some games on camera that we might actually have a good chance of winning. Hopefully we can get some points off camera. We've got Brighton, Leicester, Palace and Newcastle in those four league games off screen. So I'm sure we'll be able to win some of those games, maybe most of them. I think 
I think there might, I think we can get some some points from that. Some good points. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, drop a like down below. Leave comments if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do subscribe and turn on notifications. As I said, we're just two subs away from 800 now, so it'd be nice to get that in the next few days or so. Uh, didn't go as well as I would like today against City. It's a tough game, and you know we kept them quiet for a long time, but eventually did concede late on. So uh, I don't think we deserved anything from it, but. You know, it could have been a bit of luck for us, but hey-ho. We've got more games to come. That's just the first one. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but next time, we'll host another Manchester side as we host Man United at London Stadium. Hopefully, we can get some points off camera. We'll see. But for now, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.